Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Earthworm, as you all know, a small worm or a small creature which you often see creeping on the ground. It is generally seen on over the soil because they live, they burrow and they live under the soil. So maybe in your garden or places like that where you have damp soil, you can see many earthworms but here we are going to discuss so next time whenever you see an earthworm you might uh, pay some special attention to it because then you will know that where how do they digest how do they walk how do they excrete and how do they respire you know all of them so it's going to be interesting so first we'll introduce earthworm I mean, I know all of you know what is an earthworm, but still, a basic introduction needs to be given. It is a reddish brown terrestrial invertebrate. Terrestrial because it lives on land and not on water. Invertebrate because it does not have the vertebral column. It is often known as farmer's friend. That's quite interesting. You might be thinking, why earthworm is a farmer's friend? We will see that when we end our discussion on earthworm. I mean, well, because see, now you do not know this creature very well. Now we will be spending few hours together understanding this organism completely. Maybe after you know this organism, you will yourself say that, yeah, true. It should be called as a farmer's friend. So we will come back to this on the last slide of earthworm. Talking about its habitat, where do we find it or where do they live? They live on the upper layers of soil. So they burrow into the soil and then they live there. So mostly, that's why I told that mostly in your garden areas where you have the damp soil, you will be seeing a lot of earthworms. Food, what kind of food do they eat? Anything living or dead organic matter. So almost everything. And they get all these things generally from the soil. So that was a basic introduction to earthworm. Now let us look at its scientific classification. How do we classify earthworm scientifically? You all remember scientific classification? I hope so, right? We had a scientific hierarchy which starts with kingdom. So each kingdom will have a lot of phyla under it. Again, each phylum will have classes under it and it will go like that. So let us look at the scientific classification of earthworm. It be belongs to kingdom Animalia. There are two kingdoms, Plantae and Animalia. So earthworm is being an animal, it belongs to the kingdom Animalia. It is also multicellular animal and eukaryotic. So these are again two more things that can be added. It is multicellular and it is eukaryote. What is eukaryote? Eukaryote are those uh, organisms where the cells have distinctly bound cell organelles. So inside each cell, if you look at the cell organelles, they are like well defined from each other, well distinct. But in prokaryotes, it's like there is no proper distinction between the cell organelles. So animal, uh, this earthworm is eukaryote. It belongs to phylum Annelida. So annelids were basically the phylum of segmented worms. We have spoken about annelids also in your class 9th. Under each phylum we have class, so it belongs to the class Clytellata. So Clytellata, why it belongs to this class? Because they have Clytellum. So what is Clytellum? It is nothing but a type of collar which secretes cocoon during reproduction. Now everything is will be like XYZ for you right now. You are thinking what is Clytellum? What is cocoon? And you are not getting anything. But you will get to know it as we go ahead. So basically they fall under annelida because they are segmented worms. That is throughout their body you can see such segmentation as you can see here. And it is clytel, it, it falls under the class clytellata because they have clytellum. So clytellum is nothing but a collar kind of a thing which is present like something like this. Which is, I mean whenever you look you will see the picture of an earthworm from the next slide you, you will be able to see that clytellum. So that plays a very important role during reproduction. Again, it belongs to the subclass Oligochaeta. 
Why? Because they have bristles on their body which helps in movement. Now, there can be two types of uh, subclasses under Clytelleta. That means all organisms which have Clytellum fall under Clytelleta. Now, organisms with Clytellum again can be of two types. Uh, one set of organisms will have lateral appendages, appendages for movement, for example, false feet or parapodia. So, they will be called polychaeta. Whereas this set of organism are those which will have bristles on their body for movements. So they fall under oligochaeta. Why? Because they have... Now these bristles are often known as seti. Because they have seti or bristles on body for movement. It belongs to the order Haplotaxida and family Lumbricidae. What is Lumbricidae? This is the largest earthworm family. This family because there will be many other families of earthworm. Right now since we are coming down, say Animalia was like there can be many things under Animalia. Even elephants, human beings, everything falls under Kingdom Animalia. When I told Annelids, it is only the segmented worms will fall under this. When I say Clytellum, only the segmented worms with Clytellum will fall under this. Oligochaeta, the segmented worms with Clytellum with bristles on their body for movement. Then comes the order. There it is Haplotaxid and then the family Lumbricidae. Now when you reach to this family level, you are basically under this family, basically all will be earthworms. So this is the largest this is the largest earthworm family. You will be surprised to know that 33 species exist under this family. Just imagine, 33 species is a big number. It belongs to the genus Lumbricus and the species is terrestris. Now terrestrials again is derived from the word terrestrial. So if I ask you to scientifically name earthworm, it will be Lumbricus terrestris. This will be the scientific name of earthworm. Right? So this is the scientific classification of earthworm. So now let us talk about, as I said, earthworm belongs to the phylum Annelida. So now let us quickly recap the basic annelids characteristics. What were the basic characteristics? We have already spoken about this before. It is just a recap. They have complex body differentiation when you compare it with the lower phyla like Podifera, Cilentrates, Nematodes. Compared to them, they have complex body differentiation. So the body is distinctly differentiated into different parts or organs. Body is bilaterally symmetrical. When I say bilaterally symmetrical, I mean if you divide the body across along this axis, you can divide it into two equal and to equal halves which are symmetrical to each other. So it is bilaterally symmetrical. Body made of three layers of cells that is why it is called triploblastic. What do I mean by three layers of cells? How this organism is formed initially when reproduction will take place that time it will be nothing but a mass of cells. Correct? So in that mass of cells there will be different layers of cells. There can be two layers of cells. There can be three layers of cells. So organisms which have three layers of cells are called triploblastic. Tri means three. So then these three layers are ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. Then ectoderm that is the outer layer will form uh, parts like skin and all those things. Again, the mesoderm will fo form certain organs. The endoderm will form certain organs. So that is how the body structure is formed. So this is a triploblastic true internal body cavity that is coelomate. So they have a body cavity. I mean inside this tube like structure there is an open space and that is known as the body cavity. So body cavity is also known as coelom. So organisms with true, true coelom are known as coelomate. So organisms with true coelom are said to be coelomate. Extensive organ differentiation. So here you can see distinct organs. When I say organs, I mean, I mean organs like heart, kidney 
I mean, I'm not talking about kidney in case of this animal, but those are generally called organs. So here also you'll be able to see some distinct organs like intestine, stomach, heart. So they can be seen very distinctly. It is organ system level of organization. Okay, because here cells have grouped together to form tissues. Tissues have grouped together to form organs and the organs have also grouped together to form organ system. Like here also there is a digestive system where you have many organs like stomach, intestine, gizzard, crop, pharynx, esophagus. These, all these organs together form the digestive system. Similarly here you also have the reproductive system. Here you also have the excretory system. So it is organ system level of organ organization segmented body from head to tail hence they are called segmented worms so here you can see the partitions so this these are each partition is called a segment and this process of dividing the body into segments is called segmentation and that is why they are also called as segmented worms they are mostly parasitic that is they depend on others for their food can be aquatic terrestrial or free living. Now some of the annelids can also be aquatic but mostly they are terrestrial. Right? These are some of the basic characteristics of annelids. Now earthworm being an annelid obviously follows or it, it accepts all these characteristics and it is obviously mobile because they can move from one place to another. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.